Hello and welcome back. This is Double O Debbie, and this is episode 110 of my Dire Wolf 20 1.18 Let's Play. <laughs> Today we're back here at our fission reactor and turbine. Um, I may have added a few more waste barrels. <laughs> um, so in today's episode, we're going to probably be looking at using some of our newly created uh, polonium <laughs> to uh, probably make some armor. That would be really cool. I still want to play with some of the pneumatic armor, uh, but <laughs> I want the mech armor too. So yeah, I want a boat. Um, so let's go ahead and sleep show you what I've kind of changed. Um, other than the, the radioactive waste barrels. I had them over here and I had my uh, entangled block hooked up to them. And I assumed that, you know, everything was working like it was supposed to and that the waste was going in and it was getting, you know, it was decaying and everything was fine. Uh, but I noticed over time that nothing ever went into them. And I was like, what is going on? So I was fiddling around with the entangled block. And it is bound to that pipe, the ultimate pressurized tube. Uh, at the time, I mean, I, I didn't actually look at the pipe that was in there. I was only looking at the barrels and the pipe that was under the barrels. So I was like, well, there's nothing in the pipes under the barrels and there's nothing in the barrels. So it must have gone into the barrels and then dissipated already. Uh, but I got to looking and I come to find out everything was still trapped in the pressure tube. There was over 200,000 millibuckets of nuclear waste in the tube and it was just trapped there it would not come out uh, no matter how I tried to uh, put the ultimate pressure tube like on the different sides um, to see if it would come out uh, <laughs> and I, I uh, you know did the thing and I couldn't get anything to come out of it I guess there's some kind of bug uh, with maybe gases don't like to go through entangled blocks. I don't know, but it, it did not work. So that is why I changed to this setup and moved it over here because I couldn't, I couldn't transport it through the entangled block. But this is obviously working. We have nuclear waste over here in all of our, uh, the spent nuclear waste in all of our barrels so it's decaying nicely um i did add the last port or logic adapter to cover the damage critical each one covers a different uh aspect of the logical adapter Uh, so, it's very crude, but effective. <laughs> um, while the redstone is on, on here, this torch goes off, which unpowers the redstone repeater, which in turn shuts the, uh, the reactor off. So once it's, uh, deactivated, <laughs> it's, once it's unpowered, it deactivates. Uh, so I can deactivate it just by coming and flipping this lever or I can turn it on and break the whole thing with my mage book, which I do all the time. So it's not a big deal. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm used to it. Okay. <laughs> so anytime one of these comes on, it will just send the signal to here and it will shut the reactor off. Um, 
hopefully uh, that will be enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm still really scared. I don't think I would um, leave it on and go offline or anything. Even though this appears stable, um, yeah, I'm just not, the way I have it set up, I don't know if it's, if it's bugged, maybe it'll get fixed, but I just have this one, um, this one pipe going over, uh, to pull the water out and, and put it back into the system, and then this little one pipe right here to pump water into the system. So, um, I looked at Jake's reactor, and he had like tons of the vents being utilized to help pump the water out so that he could maintain it. So I don't know what's going on with mine, why it's working. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of uh, hesitant to go offline with this thing running because uh, it, it might be bugged and they might fix it and then kablooey. <laughs> it might just uh, blow up on me. So that would be no good, but we are still getting our, our polonium and our plutonium pellets, so I, let's see, plutonium, oh man, yeah, just since we've been sitting here uh, talking, I've gotten like 95, I, I emptied it out earlier, uh, yeah, I might need to turn the plutonium off. I put, I've been putting these in my other system because that's where I have all the HDP pellets or the sheets. Actually the sheets and the pellets. Um, but yeah, 238 polonium pellets. Um, that is really super cool. Uh, I do think it'll be okay if I go do something else uh, and leave it running. I think it'll be okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's go go have a look at what I've been doing in here. I did actually get enough cyanite that I built up all twelve of these. Uh, turbines. Uh, now, the thing is, this little guy only supports 11, <laughs> so I had to turn one of them off. Uh, and the, I mean, it's still, it's still going, but in order to have 12 of them running, see, oh, look, all, oh, oh the, I've got the chunk thing again to have to hold on a second I'll be right back. okay <laughs> now it's it's all better now we're good uh so there should be one of them that is not on i think it's this one it must i, I figured it would have been winding down already it's disengaged and it's off but it's still i guess it's slowly winding down No, oh, I didn't think there was uh, steam in it at all, but it looks like there is steam in it now. It's just not enough uh, steam to keep that 12th one going. When I turn the 12th one on, all of the steam is just gone. <laughs> so yeah, that's no good, but I do have Lots of power now because I filled in the guts of my induction matrix. So I have a lot more room. <laughs> so that is super cool. Um, I have been playing around with pneumatic uh, craft setup. <laughs> it looks crazy now, uh, but I kind of combined the two systems together. Uh, for the thermo pneumatic processing plants. And I added a couple here uh, to convert diesel to gasoline and then the gasoline to LPG. I'm 
pretty sure that's what it's converting to. Yeah. Um, but that's only what it's currently producing. It's not pulling stuff in uh, from the system and converting it. It's only using what is coming out of the system currently. Anything else in the system is just going to get left there. And it's pulling out the, the gasoline uh, or the LPG into the system and the gasoline into the system. So we still have gasoline uh, to feed our little liquid compressors. Now this is sketchy because <laughs> I don't have a way to uh, control this. It's only being controlled by my speed upgrades. If I have more, it's going to go over the 20, which won't blow up, but these will vent the air. Uh, but it's stable with four speed upgrades in each one, and it's just holding steady at 18. 18.3-ish. Um, and then the, uh, the heat sinks here are hot enough to um, activate these thermopneumatic processing plants, so I don't have to have a separate system to warm them up because <laughs> I kept trying to put the blaze lanterns underneath these guys which um, well for these only needed a hundred degrees um, and every time I would turn around my blaze lantern or blaze mesh uh, both were getting turned into glowstone which was not enough to heat this up uh, so <laughs> this should be a little bit less of a hassle to deal with. Also, to get these other two on here, I didn't realize this until after I hooked the first one up uh, because the pipes were at 20 bar and I put this guy on there and it immediately went and blew up. <laughs> so I was like, what just happened? And then I looked and these guys only take 10 bar. Uh, so I had to put a little regulator down here. Let's see it from up here. Put a little regulator on this guy to uh, restrict it to nine bars. Um, so yeah, that's enough to keep those guys going. And then I set up, uh, instead of it you know, auto-crafting uh, manually, I like have to say, hey, give me some plastic, make me some plastic, and it's sending it over here. This is just automatically pulling in the plastic into the fluid encapsulator, and I'm... Uh, just storing buckets here basically with an export bus um, and it's uh, as soon as it gets plastic it gets sent into the box and the box uh, is cold enough uh, it's way colder now than it was before so I should get better rates for plastic it looks like almost every time I get two Uh, so that's really good, see? And that's programmed to just take out the plastic and the bucket. Uh, so I'm happy. <laughs> At first, uh, I put I put in uh, the acceleration cards because I had a bunch built up and it just wasn't taking anything out fast enough. So yeah, I just put in the acceleration cards and everything's groovy. Um, I kind of like it. Uh, I don't really have as much channels being used as I did before. What is this one? This one is taking out the gasoline. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Uh, because that's uh, also feeding into there. So we're getting double gasoline. <laughs> um, my only thing is I want to hook up this aerial interface, wasn't it in, ah, there it is. I want to get this guy going. Oh yeah, and we need the 
charger upgrade. I made that too. So I like to hook this up onto the system. I don't know if I want to mess with this system because this is like <laughs> it's it's perfectly balanced, but I don't want to build another system and have it like Plus, I think I need my charger to train station in order to modify the armor. I guess let's just put him here and him here. Yeah. So that's giving pressure to it. It's got pressure. Nice. Um, hopefully this won't suck it up too bad. If it does, I will just, I guess, make a dedicated system just for filling this guy up. Now, we have to put this charging module on here. Let's see. I think I put... No... That's what I need. And maybe my pneumatic rig. Uh, this is kind of weird to set up because you have to place this on a pipe in order to place it properly. But the pipe is going to connect. So maybe I should take this off place down the pipe it's going to make a loud noise until oop, there we go and then we can place that and it should yeah on the bottom it charges armor slots. Uh, did that suck down the pressure too terribly bad? It is at 17 now instead of 18. But it probably will go back up. Balance back out. Uh, so that would be super cool and awesome. Um, Let's make, let's see about, oh, the next step in this is now that we have polonium and plutonium, we can also make antimatter. And you do that in a chemical crystallizer. Uh, but you have to have uh, antimatter, which is gotten from, well, the supercritical phase shifter. So you have to take a thousand millibuckets of polonium to get one millibucket of uh, antimatter plus it takes a lot of energy i mean look at this at one millibucket a tick it costs 400 million fe a tick isn't that just crazy i mean that i thought my two million a tick reactor was uh, or turbine was awesome but this <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> uh, but we need that uh, reactor running so that we can get the nuclear waste uh, so we can do the stuff and things so let's see what it takes to start getting some of that mech armor mech. Uh -huh. Oh, that's only listing there. This is pretty good. So let's kind of, I guess, put those recipes over there. Oh. And plus, there are all these other modules. Oh, and we need the modification station. Where's that guy at? Uh -oh. 
Modification station. There we go. Boom. So in order to, I guess, charge, I don't know if you need a separate charging station or if this charges it as well. Hold shift in for a description. An advanced workbench capable of installing and removing modules from modular equipment, i.e. a mega suit. Okay, so what what do we got to make this? We need HDPE sheets, which we already have. Uh, the ultimate control circuits. Here's the thing though. <laughs> I have these on AutoCraft, but they're on my other system. So that is kind of awkward. So I could make one of these. Hopefully it don't take too long. There's one, two, yes. And then we should be able to make this guy. Oh, what, what am I missing? A steel casing. Um, yeah, we don't have steel. Oh, this is the wrong one. I thought I pushed P. Go. I don't have an autocraft for steel. I'm pretty sure I have. Oh, maybe, maybe it's because it's with another mod. Maybe it might be cursive. Aha, there we go. <laughs> uh, I was like, wait a minute, I know I got steel. Um, yeah, this, uh, this has to go through the whole process of going through, uh, <laughs> going through the enrichment chamber as iron, then you get the enriched iron dust, then you have to put the enriched iron dust back in the enrichment chamber and it turns it into steel grit, then you have to take the steel grit and put it through a smeltery uh, to get your steel so that's why it was taking a little bit long but now we should be able to get this guy hopefully shazam okay uh dude i really need to get uh my mech stuff moved over here because this is getting really awkward uh seriously awkward uh with putting uh having to deal with two auto crafting systems right uh, so here we go now this isn't going to work for our pneumatic stuff but so we need to get some armor as well so that Oops. Oh, we have to make netherite boots. That's right. Oh, and the basic induction cells. More of those. Um, netherite boots. And you have to make that with uh, diamond boots and netherite, which isn't an issue. We just have to actually go to the smithing table so we might want to just make one trip uh, so let's kind of make a, a set of armor here and then um
There we go. <laughs> we got a little bit of netherite too. Okay, so I do have my smithing table, but it's over here in the dire factory. Aha. There we go. So let's make. And a boom. Ha! Challenge complete. Cover me in debris. Awesome. Okay, um, I can put these guys away. All right, let's go see what other kind of stuff we can do. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I might ask for quite a bit of those, um, uh, ultimate control circuits. Since we need them for each one, I guess I need one for that, two for that, three. So each one only takes one. So that's not bad. We should be able to, um, let's see, that's not the right one. G. Nick. Go. And a four. Okay, so it looks like I might need four basic induction cells as well, which I believe I also have on basic induction cells. So let's make four of those. Yeah, I would definitely like to get all of my auto crafts and my processing built up on my AE system. Uh, but I still have so much work to do. I still have yet to build up my mob system since I uh, emptied out those areas all the way up. Uh, <laughs> I still have a lot of work to do with that. So... Oh, look at that. Mega suit boots. Mega suit pants. Mega suit body armor. And a mega suit helmet. Now I looked and I couldn't find um, Oh my goodness, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, oh yeah, I couldn't find a recipe other than like a gold helmet, a diamond helmet, an iron helmet, or the pneumatic craft helmet that would install uh, the one probe. So I don't know how to... <laughs> How to see the things once I take this helmet off. Oh, look, it's still there. Is it because it's in my inventory? What if I put it in there? Oh, it's still. I don't know. That's crazy. Okay, but um, then in that case, you know, I still want to try out some of the. Uh, The augments for the armor because some of it looked really fun like the the jump boost and stuff like that i think i'm out of stored energy there it is oh it's i'm eating it too fast because these things I guess take a lot of power. So that's whack. Um let's do this because I want to see what this looks like. 
Nope. Huh. That was the wrong thing to do. Oh, yeah. Look at that, buddy. What? Oh, that looks so cool. I feel like a transformer or something. Look, it's got a little compass down there. Uh, we have... I wonder if there's a way to move that. There. You can see it now. It's got the charge level of the armor up in the upper left. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, there are all kinds of uh, augments for this. Look at my hand. It looks like a robot hand super cool <laughs> um so what are these called units uh, so there are all kinds of units you can put in there like you can increase the maximum energy capacity which is definitely something you want to do because the more you have <laughs> the more you have Laser dissipation unit. Oh, refracts and safely dissipate lasers that hit any mega suit armor piece. Oh, who's going to be throwing lasers at me? I want to know. The radiation shielding unit is nice. Excavation. Oh, this is it for like the mech tool. tool is pretty good too. Attack amplification unit, farming unit also for the mecha tool. Uh, shearing unit, a silk touch unit for the mecha tool, painting binding tool for the mecha tool. Ah, teleport. Oh, teleportation unit. See, this would be cool because this would work with this portable teleporter, I think, because this is actually for mechanism. So you could get, um, your mega tool to actually act like this. So you could have one less item on your hotbar. I think that's pretty cool. We got an electrolytic breathing unit. Uh, Inhalation purification unit. Uh, vision enhancement unit. Nutritional injection unit. This is really cool. Um, in the helmet. Nice. Uh, well, we already have this in our backpack. But what this might do is free up room in the backpack. But I don't remember... I did have this in my ocean block, but I don't remember exactly how it works. A Geiger unit, dosimeter unit. Oh, that would be cool. Um, a jetpack unit, uh, but this takes, uh, I don't know if I want the jetpack. Oh, uh, that's kind of cool. The gravitational modulating unit. Uh, that's the bad thing about this. Um, it's that or, in order to get the modulating unit, you have to have antimatter pellets. Uh, so, and there's the elytra unit. Uh, so you have to have antimatter in order to, you have to have at least one pellet in order to get the elytra do that. <laughs> I don't know why you would do that when you could have um, just a, an angel ring. No antimatter pellets, but uh, this locomotive boosting unit, that would be cool to have in, in the legs. Yes, for sure. Um, and that doesn't look like it takes anything that we don't already have. Uh, so maybe we'll like 
Oh, and it's got a magnet. Hydraulic propulsion. Oh, yeah, let's get that. <laughs> uh, locomotion boosting hydraulic propulsion. Oh, what sounds really fun to me is the um, the stomp on the pneumatic armor. <laughs> I think that sounds pretty cool. Uh, but I, I looks like I, I've been talking again. Uh, so I will try maybe making some of these off one off camera and see how everything goes. Ah, oh, the mecha tool again. See, I might be interested in playing around with the mecha tool. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, harnesses geothermal energy from the surrounding environment and provides protection against damage from heat sources. Install multiple for faster charging. I tell you what. I need this in my armor because I am constantly running into those pneumatic heat sinks and setting myself on fire. This would be great. <laughs> so I think I'll, I will, uh, you know, try to make those. And this, you could stack them up to eight times. So yeah, I probably need that. Anyway, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.